Hey guys, it's Michael from Fire and Brilliance and if you've been following our channel for a while then you already know that we are always talking about everything jewelry under the sun. So obviously many people that actually visit our channels because they're about to get married or get proposed or actually about to propose to somebody. So they're trying to learn about jewelry. So why not better uh, than to actually explain the marriage between lab grown diamonds or how it is a byproduct rather of the marriage between natural diamonds and moissanite. And that's what makes a lab grown diamond and you may be confused as to what I'm saying uh, but I'm gonna break that down and get right into it for you but before going ahead and doing that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the like button and leave a comment below especially after you've seen the video and let us know if you agree disagree or if you have another input as to what you think uh, that should be said in the channel but at that same time follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, as well as Twitter. Um, and again, you know, when you do subscribe to the channel, it's not just helping the algorithm on YouTube. I mean, that's a lot of what people say. Uh, but more importantly, it shows that you're supporting us here at Fire and Brilliance, especially if you've been following our channel for a long time. I would really appreciate it. And even if you just land on the channel, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and you'll really enjoy all of the future videos. And I'm going to get right into it for you in terms of why... A lab-grown diamond is a byproduct of the matrimony between a natural diamond and a moissanite. If you've been following our channel for a while, then you may already know that we all we've gone over so many different gemstones, from colored gemstones to diamonds to moissanite to lab diamonds. And today's episode is a special treat, especially if you are think about matrimony. Okay, so if you're thinking about a natural diamond and you're thinking about a lab created moissanite, if you if these two are to get married, basically it'll make a lab diamond. I'll tell you why. You may be confused as to what does that even mean. All right, so let me tell you the similarities as to why that makes sense. Well, what is a lab diamond? A lab diamond is essentially the same as a natural diamond. The only difference is that a natural diamond is not man-made. It's actually unearthed from Mother Earth. Again, a lab diamond has the same hardness uh, measured in the Mohs scale, a 10 out of 10, the hardest gemstone in Mother Earth, okay, uh, where a natural diamond and a lab diamond is the same. There is no difference. A lab diamond as well as a natural diamond are both also made of almost 100% carbon. At the same time, there is no difference there as well. In terms of the way it sparkles, the way it shines, the way it reflects light, the way uh, all of the physical attributes of the appearance of light reflection is the same because the refractive index of a lab diamond and a natural diamond is also the same at approximately 2.417 to 2.419 in the refractive index. So what's the difference? between a lab diamond and a natural diamond, it's the same thing. The only difference is that you can't call a lab diamond a natural diamond, and you can't call a natural diamond a lab diamond because one is man-made and one is from Mother Earth, right? So it's ultimately a diamond. The only difference is that it is man-made, and most jewelers, as a matter of fact, will not be able to tell the difference. If you don't believe me, and if you own a lab diamond or if you own a natural diamond, go ahead and take it to your local jeweler. Uh, most, most jewelers, I'm not saying all jewelers, I'm saying most jewelers will not be able to see the difference because the difference is at a microscopic level. Most of the times people can only identify the difference between a lab diamond versus a natural diamond. So if you t send it into a lab such as GIA or the Gemologic Institute of America for them to actually grade it, for them to identify the difference between a lab and a natural. And even in some cases, some labs, okay, um, not uh, just GIA, but other labs, some labs may not even be able to identify it if they don't know what to look for uh, in terms of the way a lab-grown diamond was formed versus the way the natural diamond is formed. So, again, why is it that if a lab diamond 
a wise a lab diamond a byproduct of a natural diamond plus a moissanite so i just explained why it's similar to a natural diamond let me go ahead and explain to you as to why it's similar to a moissanite what is a moissanite moissanite is a lab created gemstone it's second hardest next to only diamond it has a high refractive index than that, than that of diamond so it, it actually sparkles more than diamond so how does this make any sense that a natural diamond plus a lab created moissanite equals a lab diamond that doesn't make any sense right well of course not if you're talking about only the physical attributes. In terms of a moissanite, there are other attributes of a moissanite, other characteristics of a moissanite that makes a moissanite a moissanite other than the way that it looks and appears, right? Uh, most people, many people rather, purchase moissanite because of economic, social, and environmental reasons. A lab diamond's social, environmental, and uh, economic reasons are the same if not very similar to that of a moissanite. Let me explain to you as to what I mean. People that care about Mother Earth where they do not want mankind to go and unearth the earth and basically leave it differently than the way it's intended to be or the way it's naturally supposed to be, uh, where they dig a big, big hole, right, and mine the, a, a specific perimeter of uh, the, you know, the surface of a piece of land uh, to basically find diamonds. Many people do not agree with that aspect of going to find a gemstone. So they prefer a lab created gemstone, which can be greener and more eco-friendly. So is that the same when it comes to a lab diamond and a moissanite? Yes, because both are made in a lab. Uh, both are lab created or lab grown. It is not earth unearthed from mother earth. So that's a similarity between a moissanite and a lab grown diamond. The second part of, of the similarity is that it's more budget friendly, it's more economical. Although a lab grown diamond is not as budget friendly as, than that of a moissanite, it's, all, it's much more budget friendly than that of natural diamonds, right? So natural diamonds can be much, much more than lab grown because why? Anything that is lab grown or man-made can be mass produced. And if it's mass produced, basically what happens is that you can control the cost. And if people can control the cost, then the affordability goes up. So from an economic standpoint, it makes more sense, uh, especially if someone has a specific budget, uh, to go with a lab-grown diamond versus a natural diamond. And therefore, it has a very similar economic attributes like that of a moissanite where it's also lab grown, the cost is also controlled, and therefore it becomes more affordable for the masses for most people. Uh, the third attribute as to why a lab grown diamond and a moissanite is very similar is the social attribute, right? So many people that do not prefer to purchase natural diamonds is because they actually want a stone that they can know for sure with 100% certainty. Well, 100% is saying a lot, so let's just call it 99.9% .9 certainty uh, that it is conflict free, right? Now, what does that mean by being conflict free? They do not want blood diamonds. They do not want to know that a specific country that may be able to produce many diamonds will use that to fund wars, to fund conflict, to uh, fund um, um, uh, human trafficking, to fund what have you, all the, the craziness that happens in the world. So for people that want to know for sure that they're purchasing something that is conflict free, uh, the uh, sometimes the best way of approaching that result is by going with a lab created or lab grown gemstone such as a lab created moissanite or a lab grown diamond. So there you go. Those are the three attributes as to why a moissanite is very similar to that of a lab grown diamond because it's socially, economically, and at the same time environmentally responsible uh, just like that of a lab grown diamond. So does that make sense now? Does that make sense as to why if you were to take a natural diamond and a moissanite, a lab created moissanite, if those two were to marry, it'll make a lab grown diamond. All right, so what do you think about what I just said there? Do you think it makes sense in terms of why a natural diamond and a moissanite, if they were to actually get married, will make a lab diamond in terms of the characteristics from a physical standpoint, of physical attributes, and the social and economical attributes? Let me know what you think. Leave in the comment section below. And again, show us your support by subscribing to the channel and hitting that thumbs up, the like button, okay? And follow us on TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, as well as Twitter uh, because we do provide other fresh content there as well uh, and if you have any questions
questions, definitely leave it in the comment below. Leave us any ideas that you believe or you want us to make a video for because if we get enough requests, we do read all of our comments, although we may not respond to them all. We do read them all and if we do get enough requests for a specific topic, we may make a video just for you, okay, because we do it all of the time. And at the same time, I definitely want to end it by saying Happy Mother's Day. It's coming up. So Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Thank you for all that you do, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.